Okay. Hello children. Today we're going to read a story called The Magic Paintbrush. We brought the paintbrush in just to show you as well because that goes with the story. We're reading this story because it's coming up for Chinese New Year and we wanted to share this story because we like it a lot. The little girl here in the story is called Shen and we're going to, I'm going to tell you two words that come in the story that are very useful to know the meaning. Sometimes when I've asked a class before, they haven't known the meaning of the word wealthy. Wealthy just means rich. It means you've got a lot of money. And the other, the other word in this story is the word emperor. And emperor is just like a king or a ruler. Um, so again, they would be very rich. I'm going to read you the story. The Magic Paintbrush. Let's see what Shen does. I know that Shen is not rich. She's quite poor. And her mum tells her, Go and catch some shrimps, Shen. Go and catch some fish. Go and gather oysters to fill the empty dish. Shen sits on the seashore. A stick is in her hand. She sits there drawing pictures. Pictures in the sand. She draws a flower, a flying fish. She draws a boat at sea, a hen, a hare, a dancing dog, a weeping willow tree. The waves roll in and wash away the pictures in the sand. But on a rock there sits a man. A brush is in his hand. He looks around. He calls to Shen. Come here. He whispers, Shh. we don't want all the world to know about this magic brush. He slips the brush into her hand and tells her to be sure, never to paint for wealthy folk, but only for the poor. So there's that word wealthy, don't paint for rich people, only for poor people. Shen's mother asks her, did you catch some shrimps, Shen? Did you catch some fish? Did you gather oysters to fill the empty dish? No shrimps, no fish, no oysters. Shen laughs and runs inside. She paints a pot, then stands and waits until the paint has dried. Mm. The paint dries on the paper. The painting of the pot is not a painting anymore. But it's real and steaming hot. The pot is full of shrimps, Shen. The pot is full of fish. The pot is full of oysters to fill an empty dish. The village people hear the news. Into the house they crush. The old and young all want to see Shen and her magic brush. The news spreads over fields of rice and over desert sands until at last inside Shen's house, the powerful emperor stands. I order you to paint a tree and make it very big. Instead of leaves, paint golden coins, a hundred on each twig. Shen shakes her head. Your majesty, I promise to be sure never to paint for wealthy folk, but only for the poor. The emperor scowls and snaps his foot. He bellows to his men. Seize the magic paintbrush and seize the girl called Shen. Now, Shen sits in a prison. Upon a cold stone floor, she waits there till the emperor opens the prison door. He holds the magic paintbrush. He orders, paint that tree. Paint me my tree of golden coins and then you will go free. Shen takes the brush and bowing low, says, Gracious Majesty, come back here in the morning and you will have your tree. That night, the emperor lies in bed and dreams about his tree while Shen is busy painting a horse and then a key. Can you think what she's going to do? The key turns in the prison door and Shen stands free outside. She climbs on the horse's back and swiftly starts to ride. Where are my coins, the emperor shouts. Where is my golden tree? Where is the magic brush, he cries. Who let that girl go free? He 
climbs onto his fastest horse and rides with all his men over the fields and desert sands. They gallop after Shem, Mary Elam's horse. It's Shem, it's Shem, she's back again. The neighbours gather round, but Shem is painting silently while distant hoof beats sound. She paints a mighty river, a river deep and wide. The emperor and all his men stop on the other side. The emperor scowls and stamps his foot. He shakes his fist at Shen. I'll swim across your river and so will all my men. But Shen is busy painting. A beast with its scales and claws. Its scarlet wings are open and flames curl from its jaws. My dragon needs a tail, says Shen, and then it will be real. Yes, then it will be roaring and ready for a meal. Now, shall I paint that tail, she asks, or would you rather go? Ah, oh, she's talking to the emperor. She dips her brush into the pot and the emperor cries out, no! He turns his horse and rides away. Away ride all his men. Shen takes the magic paintbrush and starts to paint again. This time, she paints mounds of golden rice and cakes like little moons and drums and flutes till all the streets ring out with merry tunes. The sun goes down, the moon comes out and shines as bright as day, while Shen and all the villagers dance the night away. And that's the end of the story. At the end, all the villagers are having a lovely party with the things that Shen has painted. She's allowed to paint for them because they're not rich, they're poor. I love that story because it has a really good ending and the girl in the story is very clever to think of those good ideas of how to scare the emperor and his men. I hope you enjoyed our Chinese New Year stories. Lots of people in China will be celebrating Chinese New Year. Bye for now.